tell you where the fish are. Get in there. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Yeah, yeah man. Bam. 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 Hey everybody, Chris Schaefer with Potsky Outdoors coming to you today from the Upper Rogue River here in Southern Oregon. We're out with Stephen Thiel doing a little bit of springer fishing here. It's early July, it's the hottest day of the year, gonna be about 115 degrees today. We're still gonna go out there, use a little bit of fire cured row and see how many fish we can catch. What's he swimming at you? Yeah, we're going. We did right we're going to him. <clears throat> Man, that feels good. Oh, they're pretty hot fish still. <clears throat> 12 pound fish is gonna fight like a 20 pounder. Can you tell if it's hatchery or not yet? Like wild. <clears throat> Mick just landed this nice wild Rogue River Springer. Took us all about 30 seconds in the water. Typical, average size. Nice wild fish that we're gonna have to catch and release here. What you got in his mouth? It's just torn just a little bit from the hook. Skin. How's it feel? Feels heavy. Feels like a springer. <laughs> Is it a hatchery? Who likes the other side of the boat? This is a nice typical hatchery springer caught here on the Rogue River up in Shady Cove. Nice fish. Well, what we're doing out here on the river today is we're, we're using a technique called back bouncing. And primarily what it is, is we're walking the bait down the river slowly to try to catch fish. But what the boat operator is doing is he's slowing the boat down or even stopping the boat while we let our weight down, hit the bottom, let it sit for a little bit, and then we lift up, let some line out, and we're walking it down the river. But you don't want your bait down there flopping around like a fish. You just want your bait to sit there and let the fish come to it. Lift up, let it down. Count to five, lift up. If you can let a little line out, you can. If you're just bouncing on the bottom, let it stay. Well, usually when you raise your rod and pick the weight up off the bottom, you'll feel resistance for a tug. And that's a good indication that you need to set the hook. So as you're presenting your bait, walking it down the river, your weight hits the bottom, you pause, pick it up gently. And when you go to pick up, a lot of times is when you'll feel that resistance 
and that's when you know the fish has it and you continue to follow through with your hook set and then the battle's on. Well, you're sending your, your bait down to the bottom and you're walking it down in the current line into the deep holes and it's just a very natural presentation to your bait like it's uh, drifting down the river and the fish have a tendency to strike. You got good scented bait, you're gonna catch fish. And of course, we use the Potsky's natural. We use the Potsky's red for the salmon, which is really good. Hey guys, I'm doing a little springer fishing. We we're out there back bouncing the salmon eggs that we cured up in some Potsky fire cure. Um, I'm fishing eggs this time of year. It's, the water up here is really cold, um, so the fish aren't as aggressive. They're gonna, gonna be on a quick fish bite. Um, they really like the eggs though. Uh, that's what we were doing today. Caught all of our fish back bouncing the Potsky red eggs, and they worked well. Um, what I'm gonna show you, since we got a hatchery hen, is how to cure up some eggs really easily. You got your finished, your eggs that you just pulled out of the fish here. You can see there's a little bit of blood, a little bit of skein line here. What I'm gonna do, first off, is um, cut off all this extra skein. If you don't cut that off, when it gets in the water, it just gives you that white skein look. There's no eggs to it, so it's completely useless. You wanna remove it. Just like that. Then what we take, you can use the back side of your scissors or a spoon, whatever you got handy. You just wanna work this blood out of the eggs. The big key to this is you want these eggs to be as blood free as possible. That's what's gonna spoil the easiest and the cure's not gonna really fix that problem. So you wanna get all this blood out of here, have a nice towel, and dab it as you're working it out. You just use the back side of your scissors and just work it out nice and easy out of those eggs there. Then the next step is you're gonna butterfly your eggs. You wanna open these skeins up. You can see how they're nice and folded. You just wanna open them up and that's gonna give your cure as much access to these eggs as possible so that it gets down in there and every egg gets some of the cure. There you go, and you can see once you butterfly it out, it lays nice and flat, the eggs aren't all bunched up there. There we go, we've got both of our skeins butterflied open. I flip them over so that the skein side is up. And then I take my cure. Got the Potsky's Fire Cure that we've been using. In here I've got a mix that I've already pre-mixed. I've got one bottle of red, one bottle of pink, and one bottle of the Potsky Fire Power, which is just powdered krill up here on the Rogue and in most of the rivers here in the Northwest, krill is the salmon's main feed out in the ocean. So they really key in on this krill. That's what makes the fire cure a great cure and just adding that extra krill makes it even better. When you mix them together, put them in a Ziploc bag, mix both cures and that fire power together, mix it up real nice so you've got an even distribution of the product and then you can put it right back into the bottles that you used. What we're gonna do here is just a nice layer of cure on the skeins on top. Get, make sure you get both of them and you wanna get nice light coverage throughout the whole skein. There we go. What I'm gonna do is just rub this cure into the skeins here. We're gonna do the same on this side. Nice, even, light coverage throughout the whole skein. Make sure you get all those eggs. Once you got them covered, an important step is you wanna work this cure into the eggs, make sure every egg is getting covered. So I just take my fingers and massage it in there and you'll see all those eggs turn in a nice pink color. This really helps make sure that every egg gets cure on it and that way some eggs don't have a lot, some have none. 
You get nice even coverage and your eggs are gonna turn out really well. There we go. Then you've got your skein there, all covered in cure. Take either a Ziploc bag or a quart jar, canning jar, and you just toss them in there. I'm gonna do the same with this one. I'm gonna massage all that cure into the eggs. There we go, it's looking good. Throw it in my Ziploc. So if you got your eggs in your Ziploc, just close it, or if you're using a jar, just put the lid on there. What you wanna do is massage them. Make sure you've still got all that cure getting covered in there. And then what I like to do is I'll leave them at room temperature for two hours. About every 15 minutes, if you can, just toss it. Make sure you stir them up, get that cure working. As they sit here, they're gonna really juice out. After about 15 minutes, half hour, there's gonna be liquid covering all your eggs. You still wanna keep tossing them. Make sure to stir them up every 15 minutes for those first two hours. Once you hit the two hours, if you're using a Ziploc, you just wanna open it up and you wanna try and get as much of that air out of there as possible. All I do is roll it up and then close it. If you're using a quart jar, you can just leave it as is. What I do, so it's sat at room temperature for two hours, throw it in the fridge. Make sure, just kinda of keep track of how you lay them in there. If it's a quart jar, it's easy. It's a Ziploc, just make sure you kinda of keep track of which side's down. And then I like to um, flip them every four to eight hours if you can. So you take it out, all you do, you don't even have to stir them up, just flip them over, and that'll let that juice get down and get to those eggs that were on top, so they're now on the bottom. Mix them, turn them every four to eight hours for at least probably the four, first 24 hours. After that, they're good to fish. It's that simple. So what we've got here is the finished product. After they've sat in the fridge for a good 24, 36 hours, I take them out the night before I fish, and I cut them up into bait-sized chunks. You can do large, small, whatever you're wanting to fish the next day. I cut them up into bait-sized chunks like this. I toss them into a Tupperware container. This year, tuna's been a hot set, so I add a whole can of tuna. The key to that is make sure it's tuna canned in vegetable oil. You don't want the tuna in water. Throw that whole tuna in there. Once again, I use the Potsky Firepower here. I give it a nice sprinkle on top, and then I mix that tuna and the firepower all throughout the eggs. Throw them back in your fridge, and by the next morning, they're perfect. So today we were fishing on the Upper Rogue near the town of Shady Cove. It's roughly about half an hour, 30 miles from the city of Medford, which is the first big city in the area. Um, we're fishing today, we put in about a half mile below Lost Creek Reservoir which is a major dam, fish can't get it past it here. We put in just a half mile below, we fish down to the town of Shady Cove, it's a nice full day float. Right now, today when we are fishing, the hatchery runs just tailing off, but there's a lot of wild fish in the river right now. Makes for some great catch and release fishing. There's some big fish out there. We'll get a few of the old five year old fish up here that are 30 to 40 pounds even. Um, and then you've also still got that chance of catching a hatchery so you can take some nice meat home. These springers are some of the best eating salmon in the world, and even this time of year, they're in awesome shape. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd be doing a long walk. <laughs> yeah, another nice rogue springer. Good old Potsky bait, baby. The Rogue's got a bit of a different run compared to like the popular Columbia and Willamette fisheries. Our fish are a lot bigger. Um, our average size fish is gonna be 15 to 20 pounds. The wild fish get up 30, 40 pounds even. Um, there's a lot of fish too. Um, it's gonna be a pretty active day most of the day. You know, a slow day is gonna be probably one, two fish, but a good day you're gonna have a chance at hooking double digit springers. And they're all gonna be super far, hard fighting. There it is, Chris. There, oh home. man, I saw him jump. Yeah. Look at him. He's yeah. jumping. He is. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, this, this baby's got some pull to it. For a 10 pound fish, let me tell you, they fight like 20 pound fish. 
Uh, we don't have any dams below where we're fishing, so they shoot up here super fast. They're in great shape. Um, as we saw today, the fights take, even for an average sized fish, they take five to 10 minutes just to get them in. They're that good of shape. Ready? Okay. You got her. Yeah, it is. Now that is a nice wild Rogue River Springer, buddy. And strong. But it is wild. We're going to have to let this one go. We're going to release it, get it back in the water. The one good thing that we have about the Rogue here is the dam. Um, it helps our fisheries a lot. They release nice, cool water because the dam is basically there just to help the fisheries. Um, the water today, even with it being about 110 today, is only at 51 degrees when we put in. And in, at max when we're pulling off, it's probably 53, 54 degrees. That nice, cool water keeps those salmon in great shape, um, really helps with the bite. And with that dam being there, they can control the water flows. Yeah, here, dude, right. That was a big fish. <laughs> it's, it, it knows it's hooked now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for leaving it for us. We appreciate that. Almost, huh? Still putting her head down, though. Mm. Yeah, boy. Whoa. Dandy. Up here, since we've got that cool water coming out of the dam, I like to back bounce eggs almost 90% of the time. Um, back bouncing with the eggs gets it down there right on the bottom, right where the salmon are. A lot of the holes aren't an even contour, so barbers don't work quite as well here. Um, there's a lot of big boulders, and when you're back bouncing, you can work them right around those boulders, get them right where the fish are sitting. The bait, size of baits that I use are roughly probably golf ball size. Um, for springers, for a lot of people, that's really large. I like the bigger baits. When you drop them in the water, you can see that scent come off of them, and they're gonna fish a really long time. You use a bigger bait, it's gonna hold onto that scent, you're gonna be able to fish them a lot longer. The longer your bait's in the water, the better chance you're gonna have of getting bit and hook up with the fish. Oh, yeah. No. It's just now figuring out it's hooked, it may jump. Another nice fish. Potski uh, cured roe. 